name's Danny Fenton and I'm an aeromodeller and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Welcome back to the channel Aeromodelers and I'm sorry it's been such a long time since I made my last video but uh, things have been a little bit out of my control so I've only just managed to get back to uh, to doing some aeromodeling. So if you haven't been following along, there's something like 40 videos now that we've made on the uh, the build of this de Havilland DHC1 Chipmunk T10. Um, if you're new to the channel, I'm blogging my way through the build of the thing, and it's a massive model to build. It's it's not not just in size; it's it's very large for me at 103 inch wingspan. Um, it's the biggest model I've ever done and it's also a massive challenge to actually do all of these videos. So um, so if you've been following along all the way then uh, well done, thank you very much and uh, you must be fed up of it by now I'm sure. But, um, but we're getting there, we're, we're, we're making good steady progress and while I've been away I've actually been thinking about how I'm going to do various bits and pieces so it wasn't time that was completely lost. So. We'll get back into the to the build. As you can see, we've built the well. As you can see, the fuselage is is blocked out mainly. Uh, we're going to just finish off the wing fairings, which were which were where we finished the last video, video number forty, I think it was. Uh, the wings are covered. The cowl is made. Um, we're we're well into the build now. So in this video, I'm going to look at just the front the front wing fairing on one side, which I haven't done yet, and I did the other side previously, but I didn't show you how I did it. Um, then we're going to look at the cowl which, as you know, we already moulded that in a previous video and uh, I showed you all about that. So what I'm going to do is, is mark out the lines and cut the side panel, cut the side of the cowl off so that it'll swing up and open as per the full size so that we can get in to, to fit batteries and stuff. Um, the next step after that is to then fit the motor and we'll, we have to alter the depth and the, the length of the nose inside the cowl to accommodate the the electric motor that's going in the front. I need to build a plywood box or something on the front to space it out exactly right. So that's where we're going to be uh, moving on to today. So um, without further ado, let's get on. We're going to have a look at the wing fairing and I've done the, the other one, uh, as you can see. So what I've done is I've, I've marked where the fairing starts to deviate from the, 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 the actual skin sort of profile. It's about here and about here at the top. And then I've used this drawing tool to simply trace a nice arc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay some balsa um, in there, sheet, sheet after sheet after sheet, and build it up until I get to the, uh, to the height of the ribbon. This will give me some material to sand down. You could use filler and stuff like that, but I, I like to use balsa for this sort of stuff. So, um, well, at the moment I do, you never know. Give me, give me 12 months and I've changed my opinion on everything, <laughs> typically. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut some little scraps of balsa sheeting. I'm going to try and use eighth and just build that up and build that up to the top. I won't need to make them all this big. As they progressively come up the stack, they'll get a little bit smaller. But you'll see that in a moment as we make them.
Well, we've built up the area with uh, with balsa, and we'll we'll probably have to do a bit more with a bit of filler. It's definitely low through here, um, so we'll probably and on this side you can see we added some filler in this area as well. So I'm I'm not I'm not too worried about that. You can also see that on the upper surface we've got a nice close fit, but then on on the bottom we've got a bit of a gap. So again, as we did on the uh, on the port side, oh, we we will have to fill in some of the gap through here, but uh, but that's that's no problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, how I treat this. Now this is a new permagrit tool I got uh, at a show recently, and it's just a sort of a half round bar. Um, I did suggest to Tracy Richardson why didn't they put permagrit you know, put the um, tungsten carbide stuff on, on the inside as well. Then it would have been a, a leading edge sanding tool in another one. Uh, and she just looked and smiled. And I, I can guess why, because it would, means you only, you'd have to buy two tools, not one tool. But uh, anyway, they're great tools. So, um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to begrudge buying them. But anyway, I'm going to try that out. This is its first cut and just see how we, how we get on here. I put the wing on just to give me a leading edge to, to shape to. <laughs> So it looks a little bit rough still, but um, I have I've made it um, as good as we're going to get it for now, I think. And uh, as you can see, all the way around, I've got a nice, nice fairing, and it's all balsa wood, so it's not uh, it's not terribly heavy. So if we take a look at the cowl, we can see it's not actually very well centered, and it um, I've attached it along the top, but. For the rest of the cowl it's not attached so we can move it from side to side and it's actually not ended up symmetrical so if it's just at rest there's a small gap on the starboard side but a much bigger gap on the port side so what i need to do is to force the cowl across and the way i'm going to do that i think is i'm going to wedge bits of um wood just bits of scraps of balsa in here to center this radius so that the gap is the same on both sides and that should mean that the, the cowl will then sit, you may have to force it to make it sit there, but it will then sit evenly on both sides. Um, then once that's done, we can then put screws all the way along the bottom into some ply uh, structure that's underneath to hold it into that shape. And then these pieces around the side here um, will also sort of help to hold it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the cowl so that one side, or even both, I'm not sure yet, opens as per the full size. And that's how you get in to change uh, the battery pack and do any maintenance on the front end of the thing. Not that there should be very much with electric. So one of the first things I need to do before we go too far with the canopy, um, or with the cowl rather, is I'm going to cut the side panel off, either both sides or one side of the cowl to allow access for the battery pack. So. To stop the cowl distorting when that si whole side panel is removed, I'm going to put some, some glass cord, and this is the stuff. 
Uh, it's from East Coast Fiberglass and it's fiberglass strands, but they're woven into a rope. And in, in this case, it's a quarter inch thick rope. Now I'm gonna, not gonna use it a quarter inch thick because it's gonna be a little bit too unwieldy, but I'm gonna use the individual strands separated from a length um, to create uh, my, my beading. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna you know, uh, glass in some hoops, two hoops into the cowl so that when I do cut it and separate it, they'll act as stiffeners. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. What I also intend to do is to actually mount the cowl while these rings are still wet uh, onto the, the aircraft, onto the fuselage, so that the rings, uh, so the cowl is sort of shaped the way I want it while it's on the model and the rings will then set and, and hold that position, I hope. That's the plan anyway. Okay, so it's been the rest of the day, and this should now be um, solid. <clears throat> the witness pot of resin is um, is rock hard, so we I think we're good to go. Just got to hope and pray <laughs> this will actually come off the model. I put a couple of screws in just to align it. Hopefully, the uh, polythene that I put down will stop it sticking. I do think we may have had a little bit of resin catching on if you remember I put some wedges underneath just to sort of pull the bottom of the cowl into shape those wedges might have touched the, uh, the cloth on the inside so it may have stuck at the bottom just have to see I have to do a bit of cracking Nothing wants to move. It's not a good sign, is it? Oh, 
Well, that implies that the uh, it's not the top that's stuck. Maybe it's just the bottom. Yeah, could this be the bottom? Yeah. There we go. There we go. There's the... Oh boy. That really... <laughs> That's really rigid. So that's really made quite a difference. As you can see there it's squashed it flat where the um where the polythene was on the top. So that should be a good fit there now. But the um there's absolutely no give in any of that now. It's really excellent. up the right way and just have a quick squint down at the uh, gaps. Oh, looks pretty good. Okay, well I've done, as I, as, as I suggested, I've um, bulked up the inside of the cowl, so now it's more rigid. So what we're doing next, or what I've done next, is I've used my laser level and the measurements from my, my three view, uh, scaled up to quarter scale. Um, to mark out the lines for the cowling cuts, okay? And that's on both sides. But I can't cut it yet, because if I cut it, then I'm going to have a hell of a job lining these hinges up. So what you need to do is to actually fit the hinges before you make the first cut. That way everything should stay all aligned. Now the hinges you'd need to use for this, because there is a curve on that, so some people think, all oh, right, it's a, it's a straight line. We'll use a piano hinge. That will not work because there is a curve on that and it will not open. So what you need to use are hinges like these. And these are, I think they call them offset hinges. And they're quite often used for undercarriage doors or Bombay doors is a typical use for these things. Because as they open, the surface moves away from the opening. So it creates its own clearance around the edges. That's not to say <laughs> when I do this, I'll get it wrong, but that's how it should work, okay? Um, and what I've done, take this off. You can probably see I've actually cut away the sheeting that was in between bulkhead F1 and F2. Um, that sheeting's not doing anything at all, other it's adding a little bit of strength to this box section because um, there were some stringers and longerins in here as well, but they weren't doing a great deal. Uh, and if it was IC, I'd, I'd probably think about uh, packing between these two bulkheads with some bracing. But because it's electric and the loads are not going to be quite so um, aggressive, we can get away with, with losing that. And whether or not I actually cut this away a lot more, I'd, I'd still like it there to reinforce this box, but it doesn't need to come all the way out. So I may lose some of that, but it's not in the way at the moment. So I'll, so I'll leave it leave it be. Um, so I've cut that away. This gives me a lot more room to play with for these reinforcing strips and what have you. So if we look inside the cowl, what I've done is I've taken the hinge that I've just shown you and I've taken the pin out the middle. You can cut, it's, it's a round end on one end and it's a turned over end on the other. And all you do is you cut the turned over bit off and then pull the round pin through and it just pulls out and it's I don't know what gauge it is, but um, it's quite quite fine piano wire. So what I did was I took the pin out of three of them, and then I used a piece of piano wire, which I don't know whether you can see that all the way through. I took a piece of piano wire and threaded all the hinges onto a common axis. Now this is quite important. The, the, bear, the center line of the hinge has to remain constant all the way along the surface, even though the cowl is curved. So what you'll see, is that the hinge in the middle is actually not touching. Now I've aligned these all up so that the hinge line is just inside the line where it splits. So the 
the hinge won't be seen but it will be right on the line okay and it, what I've done also is if, if and again I hope you can see this I've cut or I've drilled holes into the hinge surface now this is to allow the epoxy to soak up through and grasp really firmly onto the hinge when I fit it one of the holes the one in the right in the center is slightly smaller and that was to allow me to use a tiny little screw as you can see it is pretty tiny um, a tiny little screw and I've used three of them to actually hold one surface of the hinge one edge of the hinge in place so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the hinge open as best I can um, and then I'm going to put a, a blob of epoxy mixed with some colloidal silica and if you recall colloidal silica when mixed with epoxy makes a very hard solid glue and quite thick whereas if you mix um, micro balloons or something like that with epoxy you actually introduce air and it becomes a very lightweight but not quite so strong epoxy I want it to be strong so colloidal silica will get mixed in with the epoxy I'll put a blob on top of those three hinges and then I'll close them up against the cowl not hard I'm not going to grip them I'm not going to compress them or anything I'm just going to let it let the epoxy go off when the epoxy's gone hard completely hard I'll take those three screws out and I'll fold the hinge the other way and then I'll put a blob of epoxy with colloidal silica in it on the other hand tabs and then I'll just gently fold them flat. That should then give us the three hinges. If we ever need to take this cowl, this opening part off, all we have to do is grab hold of the piano wire and jiggle it, because it's quite stiff, jiggle it and you can pull it right the way out and then this section of, you know, the, the opening section of the cowl can be removed completely. So, so that's the plan. In fact, it's this side that's open. Just double check that. Yes, yes, I want this side to open. Okay, so so there we go. The the screw in the middle there, you'll see, is not done up tight at all. It's just to locate it. It's not not done up tight. It's not pulling the hinge against the surface. And the reason for that is, as I said, this surface is curved. Okay, and as it's curved, and that piano piano wire is holding all three hinges in perfect alignment. Therefore, because of the curve, this middle hinge has to be floating in midair. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pad it out with this colloidal silica epoxy mix so that it actually is recessed into the cowl a little bit and that should keep all the hinge lines in in alignment so when the hinge opens all the hinges will open freely and they won't bind that's the plan so i'm going to mix up some colloidal put blobs on there and then just fold the hinges shut and that should um and then we've got some more waiting to do i'm afraid so here we have the epoxy resin mixed with some colloidal silica and you can see it makes a nice thick goopy adhesive okay if we look in here we can see i hope you can see that i've actually put some of the goop on each of these hinges so i'm just going to close them up such that the goop oozes through the holes. The middle one, again just enough for it to make contact and I can see that it's just gooping through the holes. This one you won't be able to see I dare say but uh, again it's closed firmly enough that you can just see that the glue has gone through those holes that I drilled in the hinge. You can see it very clearly on this top one. Where the glue has come through and it's all around the edges. The one that isn't very prominent is the middle one but I think we'll be all right on that. What is important that you must do this piano wire hinge line or this piano wire hinge that uh, links them all together it is not very thick so it is quite flexible so you must not put any strain on these hinges that actually forces the piano wire to curve so you can eyeball down the piano wire and make sure that they're all nice and straight and not being deformed. So what we've got to do now is leave that for a couple of hours to go nice and hard. Then we'll take the screws out that are holding it in and we'll fold these sides out of the way and put blobs on there and close those down. 
then we should be ready to actually cut the cowl opening off um, and the hinge line the two parts will remain perfectly flush once they've been separated and we can pull the piano wire hinge out to take the the flap the the cowl opening this whole side off the cowl for access and then that probably won't go back on until much later but there we go so now we've got to wait for more glue to dry all right so the epoxy is more or less dry it's not solid but it's 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 dry but it's not rigid so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these screws out These screws are um, from Mick Reeves and they're what he fondly calls core blimey screws because they literally are core blimey. They're small. So we'll take those out. We'll just fill the holes in the cowl at a later date. So that's those removed. Now we should be able to lift up that side which was held down by the screw. Just like that. And then we can apply, we'll apply a blob of epoxy with some colloidal silica mixed up, just as we did on the other side. Then we'll push it down flat, and that should join the two halves together then. What I'll probably also do is use some of the excess colloidal silica to go over the top of the first set, just to make sure there is a good coating. Then we'll leave that overnight. It's important to let it go completely hard. And once it's hard, we can cut along that line and that one, and then along there. And hopefully that whole section will come apart, but still hold the profile and shape when it closes to. What we really don't want, and what is frightening, is the thought that um, it springs and then won't hold shape because we've got no structure to clamp this to, to hold it flat. So uh, if that happens, then uh, <laughs> There's a lot of time been wasted. All right, go and mix some glue. Right, I'm going to go mix up a bit more. That wasn't really enough. there I think we've probably uh, coated those hinges nicely now I'm going to let them go off overnight so uh, and I'll keep them this way up keep the, the unit this way up because um, there is still a little bit of runniness in them actually that one down there could do with a little bit more seeing as I've got a little bit more we'll put some more on it the last thing you want is one of these coming loose that would ruin your day And we may have to relieve some sections 
from the uh, from the top of the um, top of the cowl mounting beam to make sure that um, to make sure that there's clearance for these new hinges. And there we go. We'll just leave it now to uh, to go off overnight, and we'll revisit this in the morning. So it's the next day. The cowl is now all set, and the um, these bits in here are rock solid, really, really solid. You can see the way it's pulled a little bit, um, and it's sort of smoothed out the shape a little bit. And it's um, no, they're, they're they're solid. Right. So now the nerve, the real nerve wracking bit. I've actually got to cut along the lines. Now cutting this one from the edge of the cowl forwards is easy and from the edge of the cowl forwards is easy there but this one is a line that is between two ends. So the only way to do this is to start in the middle where the ridge is, try and create a slot and then put the saw in to go to the ends and this is where any deviation from angle will create a bigger gap and it'll show. So you really want to get this bit as good as you can. So here goes. And now we're actually through, we can put the tip of the blade in and cut more normally. This will destroy the saw blade. So although this is a, a new blade, it's a cheap one because it will, will blunt it like you wouldn't believe. And there we go. Now we've just got to cut in the other direction. And there we go. The cuts this way should be much easier. Should be. Famous last words. Right, that's all the way along there done. It has sprung apart very slightly. So now I'll do this long piece along here. Now what I've got to be careful of is if I go down too deep in these areas here, I'll actually cut the hinge in half and that kind of will destroy all the efforts, all the work we've done. So I've got to keep the blade very flat. So I'll cut this last bit here and that should separate it completely. Now I don't like using one of these, which is like a scalpel blade saw, because it will ruin the teeth. But I've got no choice. So what I'll do is I'll use it right down near the root. Because I need a saw with no fine to it so that I can get right in there. Just to 
clean up the corner. There we go. Now I'll use the same tool to clean up this corner. Now with a bit of luck and the following wind, that should open. And it doesn't. So what's holding us back? That bit there is not rising enough. And I can't immediately see a fix for that. I'll have to have a think about that, see what we can do. Let's just hope I haven't just uh, ruined ruined everything. Anyway, we will figure it out. Okay, I've had a bit of a think, and I think what I might be able to do is if I make the edge of the cowl thinner, I think I might be able to get it to work. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is separate the two parts. I'm going to try and pull the pin out that joins the hinges together. This might be a nightmare to get apart, it might be even worse trying to put it back together, but um, there it comes, there it's out. And now we have the two parts to the cowling. So what I'm thinking of doing is making this edge really, really thin by chamfering that and seeing if that will give us enough for it to clear. So I pulled the pin out, removed this section, and then I sharpened the edge of this section underneath there on the inside, so you can't actually see it on the outside. So the gap is still the same as it was. Um, and that has made things much better, as you can see. We can now open the, the cowling. I'd like it to open a little bit more, and it won't need very much removing to make it just a little bit better. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to shave about a 64th off the top of the cowl, uh, off the top of the flap part of the cowl. That will make the gap a 64th of an inch wider, but I think we can probably live with that um, because then it will make the, the opening much bigger because I need to be able to get in there to install, install two batteries. So um, it needs to be just maybe another inch higher. So I'll just shave a bit off of there and then we'll try it again. Inserting and removing the pin, you saw me remove it. Inserting was actually fairly straightforward, but you do need a pair of pliers to actually rotate as you push and it, it will go in. Um, the cowl is still a little bit flimsy. And as you can see, it doesn't line up perfectly. But I think when we get the bottom fitted properly, and then we put two clasps, one here and one here, as in the scale position. I think that'll lock it all together and it'll be okay. So um, so there we go. So I'm going to pull the pin again, and then I'll take a 64th off the top of this. And then, then I'll try it again, and um, we'll take it from there. Okay, well, continuing with the, my theme of well, warts and all, and errors and all, um, I've made a mistake in the way I've mounted the hinges. Um, now, it's working just about but I would like to, I would like it to have worked better than that because what's happening is the the cowl is actually rubbing on the top surface of the outside of the cowl and it's actually going to take the paint off if I had allowed that and it hasn't moved very far and the gap although it's all right I really don't want to make it any bigger so it would work like that but actually what I've done wrong is with the hinge and here is the hinge that uh, that I've used what I've done is I've mounted the pin part of the hinge right up against the slot, you know, the gap, the hinge, you know, the opening. And what I needed to actually do was to mount this surface right up against the slot with this pin as far away from the slot as possible. And that would have worked. That, that's what my problem is. The same with all era modelling. Nothing is life or death. You can always undo what you've done. So apart from cutting big holes, it's going to be a bit difficult. But even that you could repair. So I'm going to try mounting three more hinges. OK, it's another day. And uh, I've managed to remove the hinges. 
They were very difficult to remove, but they, I was able to chip them away and from the fiberglass. And you had to put a scalpel blade right into the, the join between the two and then prise it apart. And I could eventually chip it all away until I extracted all the hinges. On the outside, I've laid tape along all the seams to try and keep everything in alignment. It won't be as perfect as it was, but um, it can't be helped. So what you can see now is that I've mounted the hinges again with a single small core blimey screw on one edge, this edge, and then once, which means I can lift this side, put glue on it, put it back down all the way along, and then once they're completely set, I can remove the screws and lift this side, put glue on it, and push them down. So it's a little bit of a slow process, but uh, it's the same as we did on the other side, and it worked very well. Um, so, so that's the plan. And as you can see, instead of you know, my error from the first one, and I'm, I'll freely admit it, I mean, it's not... Uh, <laughs> any modeler that says he doesn't make mistakes is, um, is lying, I would argue. So what I did was I put the piano wire hinge right up against the joint and that's not right what you need to do is put the piano wire hinge as far away from the joint as possible this gives you a longer swimming swinging moment so that that can move away before it swings that's the plan anyway so um i'll glue these and then i'll show you it all finished and hopefully it'll work it's been a few hours it's not quite hard yet but uh, I think it's hard enough. So you can see what I've done. So we're more or less at the same state we were before, but now they're just moved over. Okay, so we don't have to cut it because it's already cut. And the, the problem might be that this, you know, won't be held in quite the alignment it would have been if we'd done the hinges and then cut it open. Let's get that out of the way. Right, so let's, let's see what we got. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we've got it right. If I've corrected things, this should now open without binding at the top. And it's not. Is it catching on? Oh, it is. There. There we go, it opens and you can see it's completely clear of the top of the cowl and it's working beautifully. That's exactly what, uh, what we want and it'll open a long way so, um, so we're good and it won't take much to align those two parts um, with, with some clips and stuff like that and the cowl fasteners. So I'm really pleased with that. So you can see what I did wrong was that that piano wire hinge line was too close to the joint. It needs to be as far away from the joint as you can make it. The other part of the hinge needs to be as close to the joint as you can make it. And that's how it, how it should be. So I'm going to let this harden off completely now. And then we'll move on to trying to attach the bottom part of the cowl to the fuselage. All right, that's it for now. If you've enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.